Welcome to Embedded Gurus. I'm Ken Kennard. And with me today is Michael Barr from Neutrino. Michael, how do you define embedded systems? I define an embedded system as an electronic brain, uh, basically a computer that runs a product. Um, there, in fact, these days, pretty much everything that uh, plugs into the wall or has a battery has a computer running software inside it. And uh, this year it's expected there will be 10 billion, with a B, uh, new embedded systems entering the world as various sorts of products. So, for example, microwave ovens, iPods, uh, anti-lock brakes, all of these things are examples of embedded systems. Why is embedded systems design uniquely difficult? Well, embedded systems design is one of the most challenging areas of engineering practice. And that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is you have to manage the trade-offs between the size of the product physically, um, the cost to produce it, and also its power requirements. In addition to that, unlike a personal computer, an embedded system can't uh, crash and it can't always be rebooted by a human operator. Often these systems need to operate and keep the system running for years or maybe even decades um, at a time. What would you say is the biggest challenge facing the industry today? At present it's pretty clear. The biggest challenge facing our industry is a, a lack of qualified people who really understand embedded systems and the, the unique challenges. Um, you get someone who doesn't understand what they're doing and makes an early poor design decision that can have uh, long-ranging impacts on the product. So what we found is it's important to find people who already know what embedded systems are and uh, give them uh, top-notch training and mentoring in best practices. So can you give us some examples of industry best practices? There are a number of uh, steps that an engineering team can and should take to be successful in embedded systems design. Um, regardless of your discipline, mechanical, electrical, or software engineering, uh, formal design reviews are always called for. In addition to that, software engineers should pay close attention to the use of configuration management tools, static analysis tools such as Lint, and doing peer reviews. On the hardware side, simulation is always uh, beneficial. And in addition, if you're using Verilog or VHDL as a hardware description language, it's of great benefit to observe the software best practices, such as configuration management, as well. The bottom line here is there are a number of different uh, good practices and uh, processes that companies can use to be successful in embedded systems design, and it's really necessary to use as many of them as possible. Why are these industry best practices so important? Observing these best practices is of increasing importance to engineers and our customers in society. Safety and security in today's world depend on embedded computers. They're not just for cooking anymore. Whether it's medical devices, transportation equipment, or any other type of product, the use of these industry best practices will make your engineering team more successful. Michael, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. It's been my pleasure. For more information on embedded systems, visit embeddedgurus.net. I'm Ken Kennard.